Hi everyone, I'm back with yet another video. This one is going to be much like the previous one I shot. It's going to be vinyl and it's going to be an assortment of genres. It's not going to be just heavy metal, it's not going to be just hard rock, it's going to be a little bit of everything. So you're going to have your 60s, you're going to have your psych, you're going to have the 70s, um, 80s, um, and some heavy metal. So a little bit in there for everyone. So if that's what you're in, if that's, you know, if you're interested in seeing it, great. If not, then there's, a, there's other videos on YouTube to be watching too. So, um... I've got a nice little stack here. It's going to take some time to go through. I'm not going to say a whole lot about them. I will, you know, say a little bit more about others than I do for the rest of them because most of them everyone knows. There's maybe one or two in here that is even new to me. It's not, um, there's some record, there's a record in here I haven't even seen in the record shop, so. Uh, without any further ado, let's get into it. Starting off with Argus. This is their debut album. Uh, they're a Pennsylvania-based band. Uh, five members. And this one is a double album. It has a really uh, flat matte finish, so there's no glare. And it's a gatefold. This album is actually not bad. Um, it's been a while since I listened to it. Haven't listened to it lately. Uh, but they did do their own cover version of Iron Maiden's Phantom of the Opera. And when I heard it, it was actually really, really good. It was, it wasn't exactly like Iron Maiden's, but it was pretty darn close and it was really good. So. I don't know if I've never seen an Argus album shown in the VC, so I thought maybe I would um, I would show one. I wasn't familiar with Argus when I bought this. Um, the reason I bought this album was the artwork and the fact this was just a matte finish. So based on that, that's why I bought the album. It was a blind buy, and the person I bought it from said, if you like Iron Maiden, then you're going to like Argus. Uh, like I said, it's been a while since I listened to Argus, but by what I can remember, I really did like them. I'm not sure if they were speed metal or thrash metal, um, but I would say they're pretty close to that... Uh, level of heavy metal. And this album was released in 2009, 2010, somewhere there around. And the record label was... Um, I actually wrote everything down on a piece of paper. Kingdom... Um, Shadow Kingdom Records was the label. And... What I know is they have since changed record labels, and this is, like I said, their debut. They've released two other full-length albums. I think they also released one or two EPs, and I believe they're currently working on their fourth studio release, which I think is due to be released sometime this year, but I'm not 100% sure about that. So if anyone's familiar with Argus, um, leave me a comment. Really, really like to know if anyone else has any Argus in their collection. Next we have Axe, self-title. When I listened to this, it wasn't what I thought it was. I was expecting um, heavy metal. Um, a lot harder than what this album actually is. It's hard rock. Um, but I can't even think of another band to compare them to other than the fact that they're not like no fast drum beats or guitar riffs or anything like that but it's not a bad album 
and this one was released in 1979 on the MCA label. This one's Bad Company, Brennan Rock. It's a gatefold. And this was released in 1976 on the Swan Song label. I don't see a whole lot of uh, records uh, released on the Swan Song label. Next we move on to the band, Rock of Ages Volume 2. This one is a live version. Um, it's actually not a bad album. Uh, I listened to it. Like I said, I listened to it when I first bought them, which was back in November. And this one was released in 1972 on Capitol Records. So I have to see if I can find volume one now of this. And one of my favorite bands, City Boy. Heads are rolling. This is going to be the third in my City Boy collection. Um, this is a really good album. Um, like I said, it's been a while since I played it, but if memory serves, I really like the whole album. And this one was released in 1980 on Atlantic. And my fourth in the City Boy collection, Young Men Gone West. This one I like more than the previous album. Um, I, I, ju I just like the instrumentation on all of these songs. Um, so I'm, I'm actually still looking for the debut album. I think there's at least another album out there that I don't have. I'm going to have to check the catalog and just see which albums I still need to complete my City Boy collection. That one was released in 1977 on Mercury. Genre changing time. Commodores, Midnight Magic. 1979 release on Motown. And I believe, let's see what was a hit from this album? Well, you know what, I I can hardly read the songs on here because it's on, it's in purple on a black background and it's not easy to read, so. Next we move on to Derringer, Blue Sky. This was a good album. And the funny thing about this, this was released in the 70s, but yet I don't remember hearing any of this on the radio. And I used to listen to the radio a lot when, uh, when I was going to school, my friends and I always had the radio on, comparing notes, who's got what, what's the next great album to buy, and but yeah, I don't know, I I played it, but none of the songs jumped out at me, but I really did like it, so. Now here's an album that, okay, this one's Fleetwood Mac Rumors. Now, the first time I had this album, it was given to me as a Christmas gift back in 1978. And I believe this album was released in 1977. <clears throat> and when I opened it up, I didn't really know what to think of it because... Back then I was still really into Kiss, Cheap Trick, Streetheart, and this album doesn't fit in any of those... Uh, fit with those other bands. But I gave it a listen and discovered that, you know what, they're actually not bad. This album is actually really, really good. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if it was Tusk that came out after this, but by what I can recall or what I can remember is Tusk was not the greatest album that I guess everyone was saying it was. But. I only had this one in my collection. I didn't go out shopping for Fleetwood Mac by any means. 
the stuff that I had heard um, wasn't enough for me to really want to go out and buy the album so that was the only one I had in the collection next we move on to Peter Gabriel's self-title I've never heard this I'm familiar with the song Salisbury Hill and I think that's about it but when I played this whole album I was really 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 surprised by how good the whole album was so I definitely have to go out and buy more Peter Gabriel for the collection David Gilmour another self-title and another really good album this is a gatefold So you get like a collection of photographs in there. Early years of uh, David Gilmore. So I remember liking that album a lot too. Next we have Grand Funk, Closer to Home. This was a good album as well. Um, when it comes to Grand Funk, the only ones, the only tracks I was familiar with were. Uh, do the or the locomotion and we're an American band and I, yeah we're an American band we're the only two tracks I was familiar with by them next we move on to the guess who American woman this one is an upgrade from my other copy and this one is not a gatefold it's just a single album the other one that I have is a gatefold but it's pretty beat up so the vinyl and the jacket are, I would say, near mint. So that was a bonus. The reason I bought another copy of this was <clears throat> not only because it was an upgrade, but because there's one song on here that I, for some reason, I just really liked, and it was the song Talisman. Um, I like the guitar work on that song. I don't know why. Uh, but yeah, that was, that was the main reason why I wanted this album. Next we move on to Sammy Hagar. A little rap and a lot of rock and roll. And this one is a promo. And opening it up, it says right on the bottom of the on the record, for radio airplay only, not for sale. I don't know if you could see that. But yeah, it's basically an interview disc, and um, it just kind of makes me wonder if there's other albums out there like this. So I remember listening to um, 97 Kiss FM back in the 80s when they were interviewing uh, Def Leppard when they were here in Winnipeg during their Hysteria tour. Um, I listened intently to that interview and I remember afterwards I rushed out to the store to buy the cassette because I didn't have enough to get the album so I just bought the cassette and um, when I did get paid finally I went out and I bought the album so that's how much I liked Hysteria. Next we have Humble Pie, Smokin'. And this was released in 1972 on A&M Records. And one of my favorite bands, Ice House, Fresco. This is a five track EP and it's also a promo copy. You can see the gold right there. And this one was released, I believe, in 1983 on Chrysalis. So I think that makes like three or four now in my collection. Michael Jackson, Thriller. Don't need to say much about that. Everyone knows how good that album is. Journey, Frontiers. Now this is 
Maniacs, shout it out. And it's the only album I have on the Bonsai label. For those of you who like seeing labels, there it is there. That's the only Bonsai I have in the collection right now. Um, the last time I was in, was at Into the Music, they had a, uh, was it Tigers of Pantang they had there? And I believe that was on a Bonsai label, but I'm not 100% sure. It was, a, it was a while back that I saw that, and I think it was going for like... 15 or 20 bucks, something like that, or was it 10? It was 10 or 15 dollars. Frank Marino and Mahogany Rush, World Anthem. And this one was released in 1977 on the Columbia label. I really like Frank Marino. I have quite a few of his cassettes upstairs. And Tales of the Unexpected. I don't have a whole lot of him on vinyl, but I do on cassette. So I really have to boost up the Frank Marino collection. The birds, the bees, and the monkeys. And this album has Daydream Believer and the song Valerie on here. And yeah, those were the hits from this album, I do believe. And move on to New England. This is a good album. This one I actually have on cassette, so when I saw it on vinyl, <coughs> I had to grab it. That's the inner sleeve. With the lyrics on the flip side. And this is on Rocksteady Records. Again, I don't have a whole lot of vinyl uh, from Rocksteady. In fact, I believe this is the only album I have with the Rocksteady label on it. And we move on to the Alan Parsons Project, Eye in the Sky. Of course, Eye in the Sky is the hit from this album. Um, the album is actually pretty good. It's not as good as some of... There are other albums that I've actually listened to. Um, I don't know if I said it in my previous video, but I really started getting into Alan Parsons when I was going through some of my cassettes. I went through and listened to all of my Alan Parsons cassettes. And I discovered that I liked the debut album, and I liked this next one. Vulture Culture. There isn't one track on this album I can actually skip. I love the color. That was, an, that was the other thing that grabbed me was the intense red on this, which was all the more reason to buy it. That's the inner sleeve. And it has its own custom label there, which I thought was pretty cool. So I definitely am working on building up the Alan Parsons vinyl collection. I think I only have like maybe five of their albums. There's still quite a few more I need. So that's going to take a little bit of time. Leave that one for last. Next we have Quiet Riot QR3. Trying to think, I don't think I've listened to this one yet. I have it on cassette, but I don't even think I played the cassette yet. Next, we have Status Quo on the level. Sweet. 
cut above the rest. Um, would you believe there's not one single track on this album I recognize? Yeah, it's just on the Queen Capital label. I don't know why I thought the label would be uh, a surprise, but it wasn't. I really like uh, Desolation Boulevard, if anyone's familiar with that album. I like that whole album. I haven't listened to this one yet. I think, well, maybe I did. But like I said, I bought these albums back in November, so it's possible I listened to it. Next we have Pat Travers Band, Crash and Burn, another really, really good band on the Polydor label. I've seen a lot of people show their Pat Travers collection and um, let's just say it gets my mouth watering. A little bit of 60s with the Turtles Greatest Hits. This one was released in 82. This one has ha the song Happy Together, It Ain't Me Babe, Eleanor, and I think that's about all that I remember. The rest of the, the, rest of the songs I'm not familiar with. UFO, The Wild, The Willing, and The Innocent. Max Webster, High Class and Board Shoes. And this is another album that was released in the 70s. And I'm pretty sure they got a lot of AM uh, airplay. But yet when I played this <clears throat> when I played this album, none of these tracks, none of the songs seemed to click with me. They didn't um, None of them sounded familiar to me, which is really, really strange because I've heard people say High Class uh, was one of the hits from the album and Diamonds, Diamonds. Um, but yeah, when I played them, they didn't even register. I don't know. The Who? Who Are You? This is a really good album, and unfortunately it was Keith Moon's last album he would do with the band. Um, I remember the first time I bought this, brand new, I think I paid a whopping $5 for it. And back then, uh, that was a really good deal back in the 80s, uh, <clears throat> when, when vinyl was still a big thing. Um, yeah, I got that one on sale for like $4.99. Uh, next we have Wishbone Ash, No Smoke Without Fire. This was a really good album. Uh, I think I played this one twice. Um, and that's something else I have to do. I have to get more Wishbone Ash, but I don't see a whole lot of it around. So when I do find it, I just grab it. And Stevie Wonder, In Square Circle. And this one is actually in mint condition. It's a gatefold. It's on the Tamla label. And it even comes with, a, with its own little booklet. The lyrics enclosed. I thought that was pretty cool. And Stevie Wonder is just another artist that I grew up listening to as a kid. I 
I hear a lot of his a lot of his songs being played in movies, which I thought was pretty cool as well. Yes, tornado. And this one, I believe. Yeah. Um. I don't know what to say about this album. It's not bad. I, like I said, I listened to it back in November. I can't even remember. But what I do remember is that I like John Anderson's vocals. Um, I have actually one cassette that he released as a soloist, and I liked it so much that I'm going to see if I could try and find more of his solo work, if he has any. Because I just love his music, it's just that good. Next we have Classic Yes. And the earlier Yes stuff, I like Roundabout, um, I've Seen All Good People, and I'm sure there's other songs that I really like from the early Yes. I just can't remember them all. And then we finish it off with Yesterdays. And I believe, no, this, I thought this one was gateful, but it's not. This is the inner sleeve for it. Um, Astral Traveler I'm familiar with, and Time and a Word. Those are the only two tracks I'm familiar with. Um, I have to actually listen to this album. I haven't listened to it yet. But that was the vinyl that I picked up in November from a friend of mine who just lives like five minutes away from where I do. And this is the same individual I was telling you about who said he had like 10,000 albums and even in his lifetime he couldn't, he couldn't listen to them all. Which is again why I'm going to do that little project where I listen to about two to three albums a day. Um, we'll see what happens come December 31st, see how many records I get through. Now the other stuff I wanted to show was on a separate purchase that I had made. I think I these purchases were made this year. Yeah, in January, or the beginning of January, something like that. So I guess you could say these are the 2016 releases, or purchases. So, Queensryche, Queensryche, Rage for Order. Starting to get tongue-tied here. This album I saw at the record show, but I didn't buy it because I wanted to see... Some other stuff, see what was out there. Not sure why I pulled the album out. There's nothing interesting to see on the record label, it's just a straight EMI label. But I've seen so many people show this. I, I do like Queensryche. And I think nope. There there is a one track on here that I'm familiar with, so it's gonna be really interesting to listen to this album. When I listen to an album, I like to pick something up that I've never heard before because there's always a surprise in there. Um, either the whole album is really good or there's at least that one or two tracks where it's so good that you can't help but listen to it again and again and again until you get sick of it. Or you just, you know, you've heard it so many times that you need to take a break and go back to it six months, maybe a year down the road to do it again. But yeah, um, the price tag there says 10. The guy let me have it for eight. So that was pretty cool. And the next thing I want to share with you is Ultimatum, Lex Metallus. Um, I called up this this store. It's called Blaine's 
what is it, Blaine's Records and Books, something like that. And he specializes in hard to find items. So what you can find in the music shops around the city here, give him a call and nine times out of ten he can get it to you and you usually get it within about a week to ten days and the prices are pretty reasonable. So yeah, I picked this one up and this is actually um, Ultimatum doing covers of bands from, let's see, Motorhead, Megadeth, Metallica, and it says more. So I'm going to pull out the insert because it's going to say on the insert, I'm almost certain of it. And for those of you who are not familiar with Ultimatum, it's Scott Waters' uh, band. He's the vocalist in this. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Mm -hmm. Oh, Metal Church, Saxon, The Moshketeers, Judas Priest. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Mortification, Vengeance Rising, Overkill, Twisted Sister, and Quiet Riot. Those are the other bands that they actually cover on this. I haven't played it yet. I was supposed to do that yesterday. Um, but uh, something came up. I couldn't, uh, couldn't play this album, so I'm going to try playing it today. It's on the retroactive label. So I believe that would make five ultimatum CDs in my collection. I'm still missing Into the Pit. I don't know if that's available. I'm going to call Blaine up again and see if he can order that CD for me. And um, I know there's another album they had just released. I'm going to see about trying to get that either on vinyl or on CD. May not be able to get it on vinyl, but if I can get it on CD, I'll still be happy. But, um, yeah. This is a Ultimatum's tribute to those bands that I had mentioned earlier. So that is the vinyl and one CD I wanted to share with you today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you want to leave a comment, great. Uh, and I want to thank again all of my subscribers. You guys are phenomenal. Um, I hope this video doesn't run long. So with that, I'm just going to close out my video. Wish you all well. And I think the next video <clears throat> I'm going to do is maybe some 7-inch singles. I don't... I have a nice stack of them. But <clears throat> they're not exactly... Um, uh, there's, there's nothing unique about them. Um, there are some pieces in there that I was lucky enough to be able to get for the price that I got them for. So I may show that in my next video. Um, and then just basically go through some of the stuff that I have been listening to, some of the stuff that um, I haven't even been able to stop listening to, and there is some stuff. Uh, there's actually one CD that <clears throat> I was listening to constantly back in December, um, and it might even be a surprise to some of you to even know that I actually like this particular band, but I do. Uh, they are Canadian, and um, that's about all I'm going to say about that. But with that, I'm going to close out the video, and the weekend is almost here for those of you who you know are busy working uh, the weekends fast approaching so hope it's a good one for you I know uh, here where I am the weather's actually pretty darn nice I see the sun's coming out usually when the sun comes out here it means the temperatures are gonna drop when it's cloudy and snowing the temperatures for some reason always seem to be really nice so so t have a good one, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.